Welcome back for another Whiteboard Wednesday. Matt Hunkler and Jake Robinson here from the Blue Lock team. Uh, and today we are talking about managed versus self-service cloud. So this, this idea of handling the infrastructure yourself or going and getting the resources and managing it yourself. But before we get into that, I uh, wanted to mention that QZAC actually commented on our video on YouTube giving us some resources. Last time we covered VMforce, which is a new platform as a service offering from VMware and uh, Salesforce. And they gave us some resources in terms of doing some of the data migration from oh, Salesforce. Yeah, so, so Data Loader was one that he gave, as well as um, App, Appitar. That's what it was called, Appitar, <laughs> uh, which Appitar apparently is a free open source tool. So you guys can check that out. Very cool. So let's talk real quick about managed versus self-service. Sure. Um, what are the, the main things, Jake, when you, you're thinking about managed versus self-service and cloud computing? So, so first off, I don't want to I don't want to get this confused with uh, cloud different cloud platforms. So, like enterprise cloud versus you know some standard cloud type offering. Okay. Um, so, so there are different levels of of managed services. Okay. On, in each of those, I believe, and more and more right now, you know, with the enterprise cloud, we're seeing mainly those are all managed services. But I think uh, as cloud adoption uh, becomes greater, we'll see more of a self-service um, type setup for for the enterprise cloud as well. Or the ability to do both, maybe. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So I know VMware is working on great things with uh, Redwood that will allow IT managers out there to to take a hold of that. Okay. So, so manage, manage versus self-service, you know, if we're talking, if we're talking specifically about uh, infrastructure as a service, um, I, I see there be, being different levels within the infrastructure as a service. So, okay. the, depending on how much control you want uh, or how much you want to worry about, um, there, you know, you've got your self-service uh, type setups like the vCloud Express, mm -hmm. or you've got a full-fledged VMware supported platform uh, like in the enterprise stuff that kind of range between self-service and um, fully managed. Okay. So some of the things that might be managed are firewall rules, uh, resource pool allocation. I'm going to write this down. Keep talking. So firewall rules, resource allocation, uh, there might be patching, so you might uh, have patching managed services. Okay. Might be Active Directory. I mean, you can really get as detailed as you want as far as uh, what you want managed or maybe what you don't want to have to worry about. Yeah, sure. So, etc. Because I know there's a ton of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Monitoring and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you want to purely focus on say. Say that you want don't want to go like a platform as a service mm -hmm. type yet. So like a VM force, you still want to do that infrastructure as a service type setup, but you don't necessarily want to manage all of that. Then you know some something like a managed services with with all of this included, you know, might be good. Okay. So so looking at uh, managed versus self service, you know, to get started, uh, the self service side usually. Uh, it doesn't come with a consulting piece, is that right? Typically, no. Yeah. So, so you're looking at something that would be even, you know, either like VMware based or Zen based. So Zen being, uh, you know, I think that's what powers Amazon and Rack space cloud. Right. Right. And VMware powers like Blue Lock vCloud Express, uh, a couple other providers, Hosting.com and TerraMark that do vCloud Express. Right. As so well. vCloud Express is touted to be kind of that self-service platform for. Those people that just want to handle putting their on their own servers and, and managing that from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, so this would be you know swipe a credit card, you're ready to go in a matter of seconds or a couple of minutes. Right. Uh, Manage cloud would maybe be a couple of hours to, to set that up. Right, and and both of these are are kind of pay as you go. Um, the, the managed services part of infrastructure as a service, more, I, I guess that's more of kind of like the enterprise cloud type setup. Uh, those tend to be more of a, a predictable cost. Mm -hmm. So the self-service, I mean, they, you, you get billed down to you know, the, 
the gigabyte transferred over the network that you use. So and here, here the reason it's a little more predictable is because you're actually buying dedicated resources, right? Right, yeah. So like with an enterprise cloud, you're buying dedicated resources. You're buying uh, bandwidth at a, a specific um, megabit, megabit per second level. Right. Um, whereas, you know, like the self-service stuff is kind of just, you know, again, pay as you go. And so a lot of times in the managed cloud, the, uh, the redundancy will be built into it, and some of the disaster recovery mechanisms can be built into that um, infrastructure, whereas a self-service, you kind of have to go build it yourself. Right. Again, I don't want to get the, the too confused between a standard and enterprise cloud, sure. because that's kind of the difference there. Okay. But, you know, a self-service cloud, if you run into problems, you're, you're on your own, so you've got to go and figure it out. Whereas the managed service platform, you've always got engineers on standby to kind of help you out and uh, basically an extension of your IT department. So not necessarily taking the place of your IT department, but willing to and ready to partner with you and help you out in any way. So a lot of concerns we see out there are IT managers, you know, shying away from the managed services because they think it's, you know, kind of taken away taken away from what they're doing and what they're trying to do. They feel like they're losing control. Right, exactly. And in no way are they losing control. They're just, uh, think of it as freeing up their own time sure. to focus on other internal projects maybe. Um, but no, they absolutely have control all over, over all this stuff. We work with a lot of IT managers to, to get this kind of stuff done. And you showed me this graph earlier and it kind of helped, helped me understand the managed versus self-service. Uh, when you're over here, I feel like you kind of outlined a little more control, a little more, um, I guess, sweat, sweat equity or uh, right, Ex yeah, sweat equity, yeah. right, yeah. So, so as as the um, as managed services go up, the sweat equity, I guess, would go down. So yeah. depending on, you know, it's it's all about finding finding your medium. So maybe maybe you know you you want to hand over a little bit of of the management to to your cloud provider, but you still want to have a certain amount of visibility in there, uh, or or maintain maintain control, I guess, of of those particular things. So, and you can mix and match any type of services if you don't want to, you know, worry about patching your servers, or maybe you do want to worry about patching your servers. Maybe you're a software development that's that's real sensitive to what patches get made to the operating system. You have control over that. Okay, I, I think that's a great overview. Just very brief, going over managed uh, managed cloud computing versus self-service cloud computing. We touched on a couple different things. We'll leave it to you guys to comment in the blogs and on our uh, YouTube page. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. And uh, we'll see you next time.